Hey guys, uh, my name is Christian Sparks. You may know me online as Hippo Wombat. Uh, recently, I released uh, my asset for Unreal Engine 4 called Orbit Weather and Seasons uh, onto the marketplace. Um, today, I'm going to be covering a tutorial on how to control the weather for Orbit. Uh, let's get started. So, before we begin, um, I have my project set to have fully dynamic lighting, so I have force no pre-computed lighting of, uh, enabled. And I also should, and I also have generate mesh distance fields enabled. Uh, this is essential for the, the weather portions of the system to work. Um, in the future, I'll be moving away from mesh distance fields now that orthographic scene capture is available. Um, and I'll be moving towards scene depth instead. Um, but for now, uh, mesh distance fields are going to be the way to go for you. So I am first off going to, oh, and before I, before I continue, um, everything is set up based on a previous video that I did um, for orbit cloud construction. I will link that video right here um, so that you can access it. If you haven't seen it already, that way you can understand how uh, the clouds work in orbit. Moving on. <clears throat> so um, just to showcase real quick here, um, actually, you know what, before we begin that, um, Orbit contains some assets uh, for weather. Um, there are particle effects that come with the system, such as a raindrop particle and a snow particle, which might be kind of hard to see given how bright it is, but you can kind of see them there. Okay, so there are also a couple of material functions um, available to make uh, wetness and snow accumulate based on uh, the precipitation actually happening. The functions also make sure that um, areas under cover are not affected by um, the rain or snow. Um, in order to enable this, and I'm actually going to show you how to do that here. Um, we are going to, let's just take the material from this. So cube material, I'm going to search for it. And I am, okay, so I'm going to make a, a copy of this here so that I can edit it for this project in particular. I'll bring up my material editor here. So to set this up, you simply search for mf underscore and then there's rotate vector 90 which comes with unreal engine and then mf snow rain mf snow rain foliage as you can guess foliage is for foliage assets like grass tree branches stuff like that any planar card based geometry for plants and stuff like that um or hair i guess um if you're doing like fur using cards you could probably use the the foliage function for that as well. For this, since it's just a static mesh, we're going to stick with MF Snow Rain. So I am just going to bring that in. And really all you need to do is pass your like base color through the diffuse area, your specular values to your specular, um, your roughness through to the roughness there. Um, and then if you want snow displacement, you can either use world position offset or world displacement. And there are options for displacement if you um, already have displacement enabled. Um, this also works really well for masking and effects based on like height maps and stuff like that. So if you have height maps, specular maps, stuff like that, it interacts with that really well. Um, so I am going to, for this demonstration, use tessellation. I'm going to use PN triangles with crack free displacement. I'm just going to fire this into world displacement. Tessellation I'm going to set to 12. And normal. So now when I save this, <clears throat> okay, so that's saved. Um, I'm going to drag this material out 
and we have it set up here. So now if I go to BP Orbit and let's load in the rainy weather pattern which should apply wetness to anything with that material function as well as set up the proper uh, parameters for it to be rainy. And as you can see, wetness has been applied along the top of this mesh in like puddles. Um, I can go to the weather settings and increase or decrease the global wetness um, as needed. I can do the same thing with the snowy weather pattern. And as you can see with this particular mesh, um, it's going to be kind of, it's going to have a little bit of these raised edges um, just due to the vertex count on it. It really doesn't have a high vertice count, um, but you can see the snow would build up like if you would do this on a landscape um, or a boulder or something like that. It does raise those vertices upwards. Going into manual weather control, we have weather buildup speed, which is the rate at which uh, weather will build up when it's precipitating. Um, and the same for weather buildup fadeaway. It's good to just kind of test these out and to see how long they are versus how long you want them to be. Um, they're not set to any particular uh, time frame, like one doesn't equal one minute. It's literally just the rate. Um, at which it accumulates based on precipitation currently following falling excuse me um, you can set it to is precipitating so it will be precipitating at launch as long as it's still meeting the requirements needed um, the requirements of which you actually set um, so you set can it precipitate whether or not there's any probability of it precipitating at all the minimum cloud density for precipitation. So if you hop up to the stratus clouds um, section, so real quick here, um, back in weather, I have uh, minimum cloud density for precipitation is set to 0 0.55. So the clouds density level needs to be at at least 0 0.55. As you can see, it's set to 0 0.6 in this weather pattern that I loaded. Um, the precipitation chance is a percent chance of uh, precipitation happening on a 0 to 100 scale. Every so often in orbit, an event will fire to check and see if certain conditions are met. These conditions include, can it precipitate? Is it already precipitating? Uh, the minimum cloud density for it to precipitate, the precipitation chance, and then there's also temperature, which is kind of a divider between two split paths. Um, you can automate the temperature on a range um, which is controlled here with the daily high and daily low temperatures you can also set what the freezing temperature is so if at any moment it uh, pre starts precipitating and the current temperature is below the freezing temperature that you set it will snow instead of rain um, and then vice versa if it's above the freezing temperature it'll rain instead of snowing um, you can opt to print the temperature value on screen just using a uh, print string um, just to kind of debug to see what uh, your temperatures are at based on the sub location. Um, there's a concurrent precipitation chance value um, every so often when it fires that uh, event to see if the conditions are met for it to precipitate it'll check to see if it already is and if it is um, you can set a probability for it to continue precipitating so you can kind of hone in um, once it starts raining how likely is it to keep raining versus to stop raining um, you can also do a time between precipitation checks so this is in seconds um, by default it's set to three seconds it'll fire and check and see uh, what these values are at um, and then finally we have a rain sound um, parameter. Uh, this comes with a, a default sound, but you can easily replace this with your own sound if you choose. Moving up to wind, um, let me bring in a foliage piece real quick. I'm just going to bring in a tree. So, in orbit, we have the wind north and south and wind east and west values. These control how fast 
um, the clouds blow and which direction they blow. So I can set the wind value to be one, which speeds it up quite a bit, or set it to 0 0.1, drops it down by quite a bit, and the same goes for uh, like east and west values, or I could do negative one, brings it in the opposite direction. Um, for foliage, um, we have the wind weight. Uh, wind weight and wind speed are just pulled. Uh, it's essentially the same as a uh, simple grass wind node. Um, so if you've ever used that, it's a really simple way to set up wind for your card-based foliage assets, um, planar-based uh, foliage assets, excuse me. Um, so you can do, you know, set the wind weight to something insane like 15. Um, it's going to blow those pieces around by quite a bit. Same with wind speed. If you speed it up, it's going to just gyrate like crazy or slow it way down. Uh, and that pretty much covers wind in the future. Uh, wind north, south, and wind east and west are going to control um, particles uh, and physics actors. Uh, those are features that I'm adding for in a. Those are features that I'm working on for a future update. But at the time of my recording this video, they are not included. Moving forward, we have lightning and thunder. So. Under the lightning section, we have a few values to go over. Um, lightning color, this is never uh, determined by the sun position. Uh, whatever color you set this to is what color uh, the lightning will be. Um, the lightning brightness is going to be how brightly the lightning shines. Um, it's good to kind of balance this against your auto exposure and bloom settings so that you don't blow out your screen. Um, but that it also has the appropriate amount of, appropriate amount of light um, in contrast to the rest of the scene. Um, the lightning arc and break lengths. Um, so the lightning is built from a spline mesh component. So it starts off um, at the Z location, uh, which equates to whatever the value in your stratus clouds is set to for the height. Um, so your height value, that's going to be the Z location in world space where the spline is going to start forming. Um, the arc is going to control how drastic the angles at each spline breakpoint are. So the higher it is, um, if you have a spline coming down, you have a line and then it breaks. If that value is very drastic, it's going to start veering off in another direction, break, veering off in another, break, veering off in another, break, and it's going to control how intense those breaks are. So you can kind of procedurally shape that lightning to be more or less angular. Um, going hand in hand with that is the, the length of each uh, line between each break. So the longer that value is, uh, the longer it's going to be before you hit a break and then head off in the other direction. Um, the flicker rate, so as soon as that spline uh, has a hit event where it hits something, um, it's going to set off a flicker and then it's going to delete itself um, for performance. Um, you can set the rate in seconds that um, the amount of time it'll take for it to go from the on to off position, and then the number of times that it will go from the on to off position, uh, which is the lightning max flickers value. The lightning max x and y distance from origin, those are um, the distances along the x and y axes. Um, from world space coordinate 000, zero, zero that the lightning will form um, along that grid so it'll be higher up but then you set it to um, these values to control how far away from the world origin those lightning strikes can occur. Um, keep in mind that each one of these values one one of these values is a uh, hundred thousand units so um, in this case if I set it to like five that's uh, 500,000 units away from world space zero on the x-axis that lightning can, can spawn. Um, the time between lightning strike checks, so um, just like with the rain, um, lightning will have a, a f an event fire, and if it meets a condition, um, the lightning will go through. Um, the lightning strike will go through. Um, the only condition that needs to be met is the lightning cloud density bias, which is pretty much the same as the, the precipitation cloud density bias value. Um, so if I set this to like 0 0.4, the cloud density needs to be higher than 0 0.4 in order for lightning to form. 
Um, so since I've set this here, let's just set it to 0 0.2, which is well below what the cloud density settings currently are. I'm going to back up here so that you can see it, and I'm just going to simulate. And then after about five seconds, a lightning strike will occur. And there it was. Um, and there it is again. So um, the sounds, uh, once the lightning hits the ground, um, it will fire off a trace from the hit location back to the player location and measure the distance between those two locations. Um, and then along certain tiers, um, T-I-E-R-S, not like the tiers that you cry, um, it will either play a near, a far, or a very far sound uh, based on distance. Um, if you want to tweak those distance values, you can um, find them in the blueprint under the uh, uh, thunder section. Um, I haven't exposed those as parameters just because the way that they're set up is, is basic enough, but if you really want to get into the advanced uh, configuration for that, you can. And that pretty much covers everything for weather, I believe. I don't think there's anything under seasons. Um, okay, there is something under seasons. Uh, so as the seasons pass, um, why don't I just cover the seasons section real quick. So next up, um, seasons uh, kind of goes hand in hand with weather. Uh, we have, uh, you can set the whatever season you want it to currently be. Um, you can add seasonal color grading, which uh, borrows from the post-process volume to tweak the, the gain values. So there's color grading for each season. Or you can just leave it the default values if you choose to. Should the seasons change at runtime, whether or not seasons will um, progress at runtime, you can set the number of days per season. Um, defaults to 90 or about three months. Um, should the temperature change with the seasons? If so, um, at what scale? So if we go back to weather and we take a look at the temperature values, um, we have the current temperature, but then we also have, can it automate? <clears throat> it's essentially going to take these values and scale them to whatever you set them to. So. Um, if this in the spring I set this to like 1.15 or something like that, it's going to multiply these max and min values by 1.15. Um, same if I drop these down to like 0 0.2 during the winter. It's when the winter hits, it's going to drop those temperature values down. It's really great for if you're uh, running a survival game or something that uh, where the player is affected by the environment in that way. Same goes with the should the precipitation chance change with seasons. You can set, um, if you want the system to just run on its own merit, um, you can set the precipitation chances um, up here in the weather section like we went over earlier, and then you can also scale them with the seasons. Um, so whatever those values are, you can multiply them based on these scales. Um, and that pretty much covers seasons, and I think that covers pretty much everything for weather. Um, thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your time. Um, more tutorials coming out, more updates coming soon. Um, some awesome news about Orbit uh, coming up soon that I can't wait to share with you. Uh, be sure to uh, hit that subscribe button below so that you get uh, the latest updates and videos regarding Orbit. Um, and thank you so much for uh, your kind words and support. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, considerations, leave them in the comments below. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time.